Hi all, in this video we are going to see about examination of sensory system. So this video is especially for first year MBBS students who are going to appear for their clinical physiology practical exam. I am specifically mentioning this because this video contains only the basics that a first year student should know. As the course progresses you will be adding more and more to this basic knowledge. So I hope it will be useful for you. So let's start. So these are the list of different sensations that we have to examine. So we've got touch, pain, temperature, proprioception, stereognosis, graphesthesia, vibration and thrombus. Remember when you have, when you uh, learn about the sensation, you should also, also know about the pathway and uh, also what the cortical sensations are, which I'll be mentioning in this video. So before starting the test proper, we should know some precautions that have to be uh, taken before doing the examination. So first of all, you have to explain the test to the subject, demonstrate the test on yourself and on the patient and reassure the subject that it's not going to be painful or, or it, it will not be of any discomfort to the subject and ensure privacy. And during the examination for almost all of these um, examination, you have to instruct the subject to close the eyes, test corresponding sites bilaterally and compare. Now this is a very important point important because students tend to forget this we do, you do it on one side forget to do it on the other so always test corresponding sites on bilaterally why do i say corresponding site see suppose you're going to check a dermatom say c8 on one hand you have to check the corresponding c8 on the other okay so go dermatome wise so test the corresponding site bilaterally and compare and you have to test all sensation in all body areas you have to test it on the upper limb lower limb trunk, abdomen, face, everywhere and perform negative tests intermittently. So uh, if, even if, without touching itself or without doing the test, you ask if they feel anything. So we know if the person is just bluffing or whether they can actually actually feel something. Okay. So perform negative tests intermittently. So for all these tests, you have to remember these uh, you know, minor precautions before you do the examination proper. So first we will study how to examine the touch sensation. So touch, we have got four headings under touch. You have to check for light touch or fine touch. You have to check for pressure touch or crude touch. Tactile localization and tactile discrimination or two point discrimination. We will see each one by one how to test for light touch. For light touch you can use a cotton. So you ask the subject to close the eyes and then you ask him to say yes every time a touch is felt and you dab the skin surface gently using the cotton. See remember you are not supposed to apply pressure or you are not supposed to drag it. Just dab the skin gently using a cotton. So this is how you do it. As you can see in this picture you have to go dermatome wise. So here if the if the, if the if you are examining one dermatome here then next in the next step you have to compare it with the dermatome on the other side. Okay so test the corresponding sides bilaterally. So you can compare the corresponding points on both sides of the body and you also have to give negative tests just like I mentioned before. Now so this is a picture showing the dermatomes. You should have, you should have a, a brief idea of, of this picture so that you know at least where the common dermatomes like say C7, C8 all that goes. You should know you you should uh, you know focus some areas know some of the dermatomes so that you it will be easier for you during the examination to do the test. So at least do this C6, C7, C8 areas, L3, L4, L5 areas on both sides, and uh, on the trunk also you can you know note some specific points like for example T10 is the level of the umbilicus. So check for T10 like that. Okay. So have this have an idea about the different dermatomes. You can use a mnemonic. To learn that so that you you know where to examine these sensations next we move on to pressure touch so for pressure touch you can use any blunt object you can usually use a pen or uh, the other side of a pin or uh, or any blunt surface can be used for pressure touch so here you touch the skin gently with a blunt object avoid applying excessive pressure and again here also you have to test the corresponding dermatomes on both sides the next so next we have to test for tactile localization. So in tactile localization, the procedure is we, we um, touch the subject with the cotton using a cotton at one point and ask the subject to localize where we touched using his finger. So suppose we touch here on this uh, aspect of the arm. After we touch, he is supposed to uh, 
localize the point that we touched using his finger so remember this time also he has to close his eyes uh, you know he has to close his eyes we touch his hand and he has to localize where we touched okay so this also we have to do bilaterally so that is how we do for tactile localization so next we have to examine for tactile discrimination or two point discrimination so from the name itself you can know what the test is we we want to know whether they can discriminate between two points so that is why we use this instrument called weber's compass which has got two pointed uh, prongs so we basically using this weber's compass we touch on the tip of this a uh, tip of the skin or anywhere on the skin of the subject so in areas where the receptors are densely packed like in the fingertips the distance between the two prongs can be set to a minimum okay and as we move further as we move more more and more proximately proximally we can see that the distance between the two prongs must be increased so that the subject can identify it as two distinct points so the procedure is we first keep the prongs at a minimum distance say around 2 mm and then touch on the fingertip of the subject and ask him to identify whether he can feel it as just one point or two distinct points similarly we do it on the other hand also and note whether the threshold is similar to that of the other hand now as we move further like in this case you can see that the separation has to be increased so that the person can identify it as two points so normally in highly sensitive areas such as fingertips 2 mm is considered as normal and in less sensitive areas such as the back around 5 to 6 cm separation must be needed for the subject to identify identify it as two different points so remember this test is especially used to identify whether a person has a peripheral neuropathy or diseases like that so here uh, the threshold where or the minimum distance which the person can feel as two different points is important so you can compare it on both the fingertips if you find that it's different you can actually test more proximately and see what is the minimum threshold so that is how you will do for the tactile discrimination so finally in in touch we've uh, seen about light touch or fine touch pressure touch or crude touch tactile localization and tactile discrimination so next we'll move on to the next modality which is the pain so in pain we've got superficial pain so usually we use a toothpick or a pin to test for pain so gently we touch the skin with pin or toothpick whatever is being used and uh, some, just like in touch we have to test each dermatome bilaterally okay so when you test for pain you have to make sure that you're not causing any unnecessary pain you just have to apply enough pressure to elicit a response so one one trick that you can do is you can hold the pin or toothpick between your index and middle finger so that the pressure that we apply on the patient will be more uniform rather than just poking rather than holding it with the thumb and the index hold it between the index and the ring finger so that the pressure applied will be uniform so that is one way of adjusting or making sure that you won't cause unnecessary pain to the subject and also you have to ask the subject to say yes whenever they perceive the pain you have to uh, test the corresponding dermatomes on both sides for comparison as i always say now this is a picture showing the same so here they've used a neuro tip to test for pain as you can see they've tested one dermatom on this side and the corresponding dermatom on the other side now to test for deep pain or pressure pain the technique used is we pinch or squeeze the muscle so you can squeeze the belly of the muscles like the biceps triceps calf or even pinching the tendo achilles okay so we pinch the uh, muscles and see if there is any pain so that is how we'll test for pressure pain so that completes the pain modality next is temperature so to test for temperature you uh, different institutions may follow different instruments but usually it is the test tube we've got thermosthesia meter and other instruments that can be used for testing temperature so ideally we use test tubes which are filled with water one which is filled with hot water and other with a cold water we have to ensure that the temperature is comfortable and is not you know not too hot or too cold to avoid pain sensation so the procedure is we touch the corresponding points on both sides of the body with a cold and warm test tube separately so here also you have to go dermatome wise and test the different temperatures now the subject to indicate whether they feel hot or cold so that is how you do the temperature test so thus we've completed the three modalities touch pain and temperature 
Next, we move on to the sense of passive movement. Now, this is tricky because students tend to forget how to do this uh, test, which is test of passive movement. So, the way to remember is in this test or sense of passive movement, we are passively moving a joint. Okay, passive movement of a joint. So, here we usually do it on fingers like this. So the joint, suppose we want to test the sense of joint passive movement on this joint. So in that case, the joint to be tested is fixed proximally by holding it with the thumb and index finger the examiner. So as you can see, this is the joint that you have to test here. So you're holding it just proximal to the joint using the thumb and index finger. And then we hold the tip of the finger again using the thumb and index finger such that the finger is held to the side of it. We are not holding it. Um, on top and bottom but to the sides of the finger and then we move this joint and ask him to respond by saying whether the joint is up or down each time the movement is made so basically we ask him to close the eyes we hold the hold his finger like this that means proximally just uh, before the joint that you're going to test you hold it with the thumb and index finger and you hold the tip of the finger using the thumb and index finger and then you uh, move it up and down and ask him to say whether the joint is up or down here also we have to do it on both the sides so see this is how the test will look like in this case as you can see the joint is moved up so the su subject must respond that the joint is up and here it is moved down so that is how you test for sense of passive movement next test is joint position sense joint position sense so here we here also we are going to test whether the joint whether the subject can identify the position of the joint so here you ask the subject to close the eyes and position the fingers or limb in a specific posture so here as you can see the examiner is keeping a specific posture for the fingers and the limb and then you ask the subject to replicate the position with the other hand so the subject's eyes are closed you keep his one limb in one position now that can be in any position and you ask the subject to keep his other hand in that position okay so that we know whether the subject knows the position of his joint so that is how we'll do it here also you can perform the same procedure with a big toe also using you up on the upper limb and lower limb you can do this joint position sense so don't get confused between sense of passive movement and joint position sense in sense of passive movement you're moving a joint passively in joint position sense you are just keeping it in a specific posture and asking him to do the same with the other limb okay next is stereognosis what do you mean by stereognosis since stereognosis you are uh, testing the ability of the subject to identify common things so here you ask the subject to close the eyes and then you place a familiar object like a coin or a key or a pen in the subject's hand and then the subject is supposed to just feel the subject and he's not supposed to look at but feel the subject identify the size shape and texture and then tell what that thing is you have to repeat it on other side also but when you test on the other side you have to use a different object like for example if you're using a coin on one hand you can use a pen on the other don't repeat the uh, the same thing for both the hands so that is how you'll do stereognosis stereognosis next is graphesthesia what is graphesthesia when the term graphesthesia itself means you have to something to do with the writing so here you use a blunt object like a closed pen cap and trace numbers on the subject's skin or palm so you can use numbers like 0 1 8 you don't want to use numbers like 6 or uh, 7 because it will be confusing for the uh, subject to identify what it is because it is dependent on the direction in which we write so use numbers which uh, which uh, which are familiar like 0 1 8 uh, and you can also use alphabets provide the subject is literate and he can read or write that language okay so you can write the numbers on the subject skin or palm as a subject to identify and verbally, verbally report what the number was traced on their skin so that is how we will do graphesthesia okay so graph means writing something next we have to test for their vibration sense 
So for vibration sense, the instrument that we use is a tuning fork and the frequency is important. We use a 128 hertz frequency tuning fork. Remember for Rini and Weber, we have to use a 256 or 512. For vibration sense, we use a lower frequency. 128 hertz is used for vibration sense. So we place the foot of the tuning fork or the base of the tuning fork on bony prominence like the big toe. Okay. So when we say bony prominence, we mean the big toe, the medial malleolus, the petala, prominences like that. So first you can start with the big toe, keep the tuning fork on the big toe and ask the subject whether he can feel the vibrations. And then you know, if he can feel it, we uh, do, or do it on the other leg also. Now suppose he is not feeling the vibrations, then what should you do? You should move more proximally. So the next bony prominence would be medial malleolus. If that is not working, move on to the petella. So like that we have to move more proximally if the subject cannot feel the vibrations distally. Okay. So that is how we have to do the vibration tense sense. So remember we have to use a tuning fork of 128 hertz. So next is sensory inattention. So for sen what is meant by sensory inattention? It is the loss of ability to perceive sensation on one side of the body when the corresponding areas on both sides of the body are stimulated simultaneously. So don't get confused. So basically in this, when we touch one part of the one part of his limb, he will be able to identify. If we touch the other, other limb separately also, he will be able to identify. But if we touch both together, then he will not perceive that he is being touched on one side. That is meant by sensory inattention. You touch on one side, he gets it. You touch on the other, he gets it. But when you touch it, touch them together, he will not be able to perceive it. So that is meant by sensory inattention. It is a loss of ability to perceive sensation on one side of the body when corresponding areas on both sides of the body are simultaneously stimulated. Okay. So the you do the procedure just like that. We first touch the subject on one hand. He will say yes. We touch the corresponding point on the other limb, he will say yes and then we will touch them together and ask him where we touched. You ask him where was the touch felt. So if he says I, I felt the touch on both the sides, that means there is no sensory inattention. Okay, So that is how you will do sensory, the test for sensory inattention. And finally, we have got the Romberg's test. So Romberg's test is specifically for the dorsal column pathway lesion and also if there is any cerebellar lesion then also the Romberg's test will be positive. So here you ask the subject to stand with your feet close together okay, as you can see in the picture and then you have to instruct the subject to close your eyes and when, you, when the subject is standing like that you have to provide a support so that in case the patient falls you will be able to hold the subject. Remember you need not touch the subject, you just have to hold the hands to make sure that you are ready if in case a subject falls. So this is how you will do the Romberg's test. Remember they have to keep their feet close together and close the eyes. So that is how you will do the Romberg's test. So to summarize, in sensory system we have seen how to examine for light touch, growth touch, tactile localization, tactile discrimination, pain, temperature. Under proprioception we tested both passive movement and joint position sense. Stereognosis, graphosthesia, vibration sense, sensory inattention and Romberg's test. So of these, the cortical sensations are these four. Tactile localization, tactile discrimination, stereognosis and graphosthesia. They are called the cortical sensations. So that is a very um, favorite question of the examiners. So I hope you know, you have a basic idea of how to do this. If you do it uh, among each other, it will be more clear for you. I hope you remember the initial points that I have said regarding doing it bilaterally and doing it on the corresponding points. I hope this video is useful for you. Thank you.